Welcome back as we continue our discussion of Sula by Toni Morrison. Um, but there is, you know, we're about to Thank probably... Thank you for choosing it. It's just... Been oh yeah, wonderful. it's been wonderful. Um, Thank you. But I think underlying all of all of the stuff that goes on in this book, there's that underlying problem with racism because at towards the end of the book, it's it's the fact that a white golf course is going to be built that is a problem. Um, there's you know there's the rumor about Sula sleeping with white men. That's a problem, you know. Um, and and within the friendship. It's a it's the the problem isn't racism within the friendship of Nell and Sula. It's in the different ways that the way that Nell can't believe or is so hurt when Sula sleeps with Jude, Nell's husband, is so it's so strange because Sula doesn't really think she should be bothered. You know, it's like not a big deal that she slept mm -hmm. with Jude. She's she's a little, you know miffed that Nell's miffed you know it's like really you know but um haven't we all known that woman you know not not maybe the one that slept with our husband but the the woman who just gets miffed that you're miffed when when she's done the thing that was hurtful in the first place you know I mean yeah and maybe not just maybe that's not just women maybe men do that too I don't know but um you know there's there's just some some layering in the conflicts in this this story there's the racist the racism conflicts there's the male female conflicts there's children and 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 parents whether they're adult children or children children you know there's there's all kinds of conflicts in this um story that that just oh gosh like i said it's hard to keep it to an hour but what's next what's next yeah tell me tell me sarah e where we're at in our notes well i would like to just kind of tag on to you with I think one of the, the wonderful takeaways that you can get from this book, if we look at our own American history, we have case after case of these historic black communities, which are swept away for white yep. convenience. And yeah. something that Morrison does in this book is not only center this black community, but present it as rich and full of real live human beings who are neither saints or devils in mm -hmm. their entirety, but being fully human mm -hmm. and preserving that time and place for us before it is swept away. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So. That's, that's a really good way to put that. Yeah. And in some ways, I feel like our passage reflects that because if you think about it and you read this passage and you, you take the fact that it's about having sex away, that this idea of losing, of, of, of being in a certain position that is different than your inner self. So that could be like what's going on in the landscape, in the world around you, as opposed to what's going on within you and how that makes you feel. And that then all this stuff about the breaking apart and the howling and that, you know, all the rest of it still makes sense in the context of what you just said. So another reason I love this passage is because it's more than just one woman one woman's inner inner dialogue about the act of lovemaking and you know it seems to be a passage that truly could represent the entire story in a way um i know that might sound a little crazy but i mm -hmm. when you were talking i was like yeah it's just like our passage yeah that's just like in the passage and i was like wait a minute <laughs> that's weird so um because I feel like the passage brings out a lot of emotional responses and, and visuals and, and things. And when you were d kind of wrapping that all up, that's, that's what was happening. I was getting all those same feelings and um, visuals in my mind, in my mind's eye, uh, when you were talking about um, that, that, I don't know, I don't want to say summing it up because that's dumb. That's a dumbed down way of, saying what you did but you did that so eloquently and i don't know what the word is to describe it it's just your i would love to talk a little bit about female friendships because as we pointed out this is a very different type of book in that yeah. so many books center a romantic relationship mm -hmm. and this one centers a female friendship mm -hmm. um so do we think that nil and sula are a good example of female friendship 
good as in true, yes. Okay. As in honest, as in uh, can I imagine these people actually existing in the real world? Yes. Good as in healthy? <laughs> Not yes, always. Let's, let's yeah. talk about the healthy. <laughs> Not always. I think I think in childhood, again, it's that that's one of the things where I said once you read the book, you think, Oh, I should have seen that coming because of the stuff that happened in their childhood. Oh, you know, I should have known this relationship was gonna be this difficult because of the 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 children that they were. They don't they kind of stay true to their childhood selves throughout the whole story, right? It, 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 they just grow up, but mm -hmm. their elemental selves are fairly well defined by Toni Morrison in the early chapters when we meet them as children. And I feel like as children, we're tricked a little bit. That the way Toni Morrison did it is she wrote them as sharing everything. They're so close. They're so bonded. They they have this great you know friendship as children, and you think that's good. That's wonderful. They're wonderful best friends. And yet, and yet, even in childhood, oh, that Toni Morrison is clever. There's enough little stuff in there that makes you kind of go eek, twinge. Great, what, what, what? That's not so pleasant. So, um, yeah, it's fascinating the the friendship and the way it plays out over time, especially with a ten year break. And mm -hmm. that's one of the things I would say is a clue for me that that yeah, I could see this this friendship actually being real in real life because you know I have had friends in my life that I haven't seen for years and years and years. Uh, and then I see them and it's like, no time has passed, you know, there they are. Oh yeah, my friend. And we just kind of start talking like we saw each other yesterday. So I can, I, I think that rings true. Uh, healthy. I mean, Sula sleeps with Nell's husband, not healthy, not good for a friendship. You know, that is not a good, a good way to have a friendship with another woman. You know, she didn't, so. do, she didn't do that. Right, she it did doesn't it matter. She that's, did it. That's who she is. I know, you know, but she knew her friend Nell, right? They were so bonded and so close. She had to know that Nell wasn't going to, you know, that that wasn't going to fly with Nell. I mean, she had to, on some level, know what she was doing. And was it a test to see if Nell would still be her friend? I mean, I don't know. I feel like, what do you think, Sarah E? Because I think that, since that's what breaks their friendship apart, you know, that's the moment, that's the, not the moment, but the situation that breaks their friendship um, until the very end of the book when only one of them is still alive um what do you think i mean i don't think it's healthy for <laughs> right <laughs> no, i i agree and i would say that even more than the sin of you know sleeping with her husband is the sin of not knowing nell well enough to know that that's one of her core values that's important right. to her that's going to hurt her right being I mean, willing to hurt her Mm -hmm. or 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 being unaware that she could potentially hurt her is what's like sula uh are you like a sociopath are you crazy do you not know this you know it's just kind of like what um i mean is that sort of um if, if one has a negative view of sula do you think she gets any satisfaction from realizing that that Nell is there experiencing this pain of watching this moment the same way that she was kind of watching her mother burn. I think it's exactly like the death of her mother. And I think it's exactly like Chicken Little. I think, I think that, you know, Sula felt, felt guilty about Chicken Little, right? Isn't it Sula who felt guilty about Chicken yes. Little? Yeah, because she's, she goes to Shadrach's shack and all yeah um but she that that episode with chicken little that what happened there that was almost like the last time she felt guilty about anything it it seems like for the rest of the story that's not her anymore that changed her somehow she it went on to you know, not really care what she did that might hurt people.
Next up, we continue our discussion of Sula by Toni Morrison.